Okay, ladies, welcome to chapter one. This is section one one, expressions and formulas. Okay, a lot of this is a review of Algebra 1 material, but we're going to go over it anyway. Part of the reason why I wanted to do this in a video is so that we can go through it somewhat quickly and have some time to do more practice in class. Um, to get started, make sure you have your note sheet like I have held up here in front of you to follow along with the video. Remember, too, as we've talked about before with these videos, be sure if it's going too fast, you can pause, rewind, and rewatch at any time. Um, but please watch it all the way through to the end, even if it does seem like a review to you, because there are some little things we do need to uh, make note of in this section that will make sure we're successful the rest of the school year. Okay, so we're going to start out as you look on your note sheet. There's four vocab terms that we need to talk about. So follow through as I go through on the PowerPoint and copy these definitions down. I'll highlight a few things about them, but I don't want to spend it too much. This is not... English class where we're going to talk too much about vocabulary, but I do like us to talk the talk of math, so vocabulary is a big element of the course, so that way I can make sure that you are speaking like the amateur mathematicians that we are. All right, so the first word is a variable. Again, we should know what that is by now. We're in Algebra 2, but in case you forgot, it's a letter that represents something that is unknown, okay? Next is an algebraic expression. Now, there's a couple things in this definition that are important to know and to differentiate. So it says it's an expression that contains at least one variable, okay? That's what makes it an algebraic expression as opposed to what's called a numeric expression, so something like 2 plus 3. So here's an example right here of an algebraic expression, 4x minus 1. Notice what it's missing, and what makes it an expression is it doesn't have an equal sign, okay? That would be an equation, and we'll talk more about that later on in chapter one, okay? Another vocab word from this section is evaluate, and this is a key verb that a lot of students confuse. Evaluate is different than solve. Evaluate means I give you a number, right? We replace each variable of an expression with a number, and then simplify using this is the big key thing, the orders of operations, which we'll talk about in a couple seconds. Okay, Evaluate is different than solving. The difference is because there's no equal sign. We only solve equations. So if there's no equal sign, we're not solving anything. That's just a little semantic vocabulary thing that I want you to understand. Okay, In this section, there's no solving because there's no equal sign. All right, and last the order of operations. This you should know. There's your key acronym right there, PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I had a student one year tell me, Mr. Wiz, I can't remember this. I ain't got no Aunt Sally. This is from another school, by the way. Um, even if you don't have an Aunt Sally, you can still remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. If you forgot the order, because it's been a while, let's just refresh our memory. So the P is parentheses. Anything in parentheses, regardless of whether it's multiplication, addition, operation, doesn't matter. If it's in parentheses, you must do it first. After you take care of your parentheses, then you look at your exponents. Then you go from left to right and do any multiplication, followed by any division. Then you work from left to right again, and you do any addition or subtraction. And that's the order of operations that will prevent you from getting the wrong answer. That's very important. You know, when we read books, we're taught to always go from left to right. But in a math expression, we don't just go from left to right necessarily. There is some hierarchy of how, what we must do. And PEMDAS, the order of operations, dictates that. All right. So now that we've refreshed our memory of what that is, let's evaluate some expressions. So here we go. So we're going to do some of those examples in the middle of your note sheet. So, the directions say evaluate for m equals 12 and q equals negative 1. See, that's another key difference between a problem where I'm having you evaluate versus a problem where you have to solve. Solve, we wouldn't know the values of the variable. We need to figure that out. But here, and it's in the name, evaluate, I'm giving you a value. In fact, I'm giving you two values. m is, ne is positive 12 and q is negative 1. So let's look at the first expression. Well, actually, they both popped up. We're going to focus with the left one first. All right, so m plus the quantity of 3 minus q, quantity squared. So first step, we'll plug in. So we know m is 12. 
and we know Q is negative 1. Okay, and right from the get-go, I want to train you to do one important thing, and that's why I put this problem as one of the first examples we do. Notice how, whoops, notice how I put this negative 1 in parentheses. I will always do that, and you should do it too. Why? Because I always want to remember the difference between this being a negative sign and that being a subtraction. Also, why do I do it? Because by doing it this way, it reminds me that minus a negative is the same thing as plus positive. So now let's do our order of operations. We'll start with what's inside the parentheses. We'll add 3 plus 1 and we'll get 4. Okay, so that was our P. Next thing we'll do is we'll do our exponent E. We'll do 4 squared, so that's 12 plus 16. I should really be putting equal signs in each line because that is the same thing as that and then it's the same thing as that with different numbers. So 12 plus 16 is 28. We skip the M and the D because there's no multiplication or division at this point. We just go right to the adding. All right. Let's look at the second example. So now it's a little bit more complicated, a few more operations. We have M divided by 2Q plus 4. So M is 12. And Q again is negative 1. Again, I don't want to forget or confuse myself with negative versus subtraction, so I put parentheses here. All right, so we go from left to right. Even though they are parentheses, there's really no operation in there, so there's no parentheses in the whole problem. There's no exponents, so we'll go from left to right and multiply. Multiply right there. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, so we'll do that. Now we go left to right looking for division. 12 divided by negative 2, that's negative 6. Negative 6 plus 4, negative 2. So this expression carries a value of negative 2 when m is 12 and q is negative 1. All right, we'll have a couple more tougher examples, numbers 3 and 4 on your sheet. It's tougher because, well, there's three variables. And now, I'm being a wise guy and sticking in a decimal for one of my variables. So A is negative 2, B is 3, C is 4.2, and these are the expressions we're going to evaluate. So we'll look at this first one here. This is number 3 on your sheet. The quantity A squared plus 4C over 3B plus 2A. Now, when you see a big expression on either the top or bottom or both of a fraction, here's what I want you to think. There's actually a hidden operation in here, and this is important for order of operations. Each of the numerators and denominators are actually containing parentheses. So when we do our order of operations, we're actually going to do these separately of each other and then divide the one top number we get by the one bottom number we get. So here's what I mean. So let's plug in for number 3 all our a's to be negative 2, all our b's to be 3, and all our c's to be 4.2. There's those parentheses again because I'm dealing with a negative number. Okay, 4.2 for c. b is 3. And a is negative 2. Okay. So, like I said, we're going to do the top separate from the bottom. So I'm going to look at the top, and I'm going to do order of operations just on the top. So no parentheses, but the exponent is here first, so we'll do negative 2 squared. Now here's another reason, ladies, why I like to put negative numbers in parentheses. And we're going to talk more about this in class tomorrow. Negative 2 squared is different than that. And that's all I'm going to say for right now, because I want to uncover that a little bit more in class tomorrow. This is saying negative 2 times itself. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. So that's the result of that operation. Next, we'll do 4 times 4.2 because we have to do the multiplication before we add. 16.8. And then we do the bottom. 9 minus 4. Positive 2 times negative 2 becomes a negative 4. I'll add the top. That gets me 20.8. I'll subtract the bottom, and then I'll divide that result. Notice, see what I mean by saying that these are technically in parentheses? We just talked about PEMDAS. Technically, we would do the division first, but we actually have to do the division after we get one number for each of the top and bottom. So 20.8 over 5 
You could technically leave it like that, but I don't like decimals in fractions. So I'm actually going to go to my calculator and divide that. And 20.8 over 5, or divided by 5, gets me 4.16. That's a better answer. So that's the value of that expression. All right, let's do it again. So b cubed is 3 cubed plus negative 2 times 4.2 over negative 2 times 3, whoops, plus 2 times 3, 4 points, so just plugging in. Be very careful about that. Make sure you put the right letters in the right spots or the right numbers in the right spots. So 3 cubed is 27. Negative 2 times 4.2 is negative 8.4. That's going to be negative 6 down the bottom. And then 2 times 3 times 4.2 is 25.2. Okay, so again, we're going to turn each of the top and bottom into one number. So 27 plus negative 8.4 is going to be 18.6. And the bottom then becomes 25, 19.2. Uh, Just doing a little of this on the calculator. There's no shame in doing that. You'll be exact. Especially when you're dealing with negatives and decimals. Even I, I'm good at arithmetic, but I don't want to mess anything up. So I will use the calculator as well. And if you notice, that's why I'm looking off to the side. I'm looking at my calculator. All right, so 18.6 divided by 19.2 is 3.723. My calculator is saying 7238. That's how I have it set for decimals. Okay, so there's a couple more examples. All right, so that is the end of section 1.1. One, one. Uh, at this point, you have some practice questions that are at the bottom of your note sheet. Give those a try. Bring any questions you have to class, as well as the answers to those practice questions. We'll be going over those and looking at a couple other things that are in this section but weren't in the video. So with that, I wish you a good evening, and I'll see you in class.